So a friend bought me the Kara Cube for Christmas, and I decided to experiment with it a little bit. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with Akara, they sell a whole suite of automation hardware, such as smart switches, sensors, cameras, and more. Cube is a literal cube that performs custom actions based on seven possible motions. Shake, knock, rotate, flip, slide, drop, and press. Sounds fun, right? Uh... Yes and no. The thing is that I expected that it may not be as easy and simple since I was taking the road less traveled and opted to experiment without the required hub. Now in order for any of the car products to work, they require a hub. The car uses the Zigbee protocol to communicate and the hub is required to facilitate this communication. However, buying the hub meant committing to an ecosystem and I don't know too much about a car to commit. I gotta put a ring on it first. So instead, I got the Combi 2 USB stick. This will act as my agnostic hub to connect any Zigbee enabled device. And it actually worked, but not without frustration. <laughs> Remember, if it's too easy, you're probably doing something wrong. So if you're looking how to connect these, here's how you can find the resources that I use. First, Look in the description. So after I got Home Assistant recognizing most of the cube's actions, I should probably warn you that by not using the Kara Hub, you might not be able to use all of the cube's actions. I, I was willing to take that risk. You might not be. And by the time you're seeing this, there may be full support or no support. Who knows? So now that I had Home Assistant recognizing most of a car's actions, it's time to build the automation that I want. Let's take a look into Node Red and see how I achieved this automation. This node here is a device node, and basically it's, um, but essentially it allows us to actually use and choose a device and trigger things based off of that particular device. All right, so Home Assistant, that's fine. Trigger, and then we're gonna look for the Master Omnicube, and here are all the actions, and we want the one that's rotating. So when we're gonna rotate right, so going to the right basically means that we're going to go clockwise and that will make everything brighter. Going to the left is counterclockwise. Then we're going to make everything dimmer. Rotate right. We're going to copy this and then we're just going to have rotate left. Rotate left and we're going to change this to left. Since you're working with this for the first time, you probably won't know what event does what. So the way that we can check is we can just create an event listener and just listen to like all the events that comes through. Or you can just debug. So we're gonna use a debugger. Attach. We're just gonna use one. We're gonna deploy it and we're gonna test it out and see what happens. All right, so as I rotate, we see the actions come through. So let's just choose one, event, data, command is rotate right. All right, so that works for me. And then let's connect the left one and just make sure that the command is rotate left. Deploy, clear, I'm rotating to the left. Ah, there it goes, triggered. Payload, event, data, rotate left. All right, so now we found that we're looking into all of this up until command, and we can easily kind of just copy that path. Something I want you to notice is that within the command, you see that it's rotate right, and then we have rotate left, but then they have this args object, and inside it has the relative degrees, and here it's a number. So we know how relative to where it starts, how many, how we knew, we know how it spins based off of where it starts from. So we can work with this number here. All right, 
So now that we know the relative degrees, we also need one more piece of information and we need to find out what the brightness, the current brightness of the lamp is. So we can use the current state node. So the current state node allows us to essentially find the existing state of whatever entity that we need. So we go here, entity, we're gonna look for, in my case, the office light. Current light status, we'll just call it that. And we're gonna save this entity, we're gonna save it into uh, light. I think I probably wanna leave this payload out entity state. So we don't want to disrupt this payload. This payload is going to be the information that comes in from when we spin it. So we don't want to overwrite it. So we're just going to remove it for now. So all we're going to do is we're going to take this existing entity and we're going to just shove it inside this new variable or yeah, this new variable called light. So now let's plug that into there, plug that into there. And then we can test this out a little bit, attach it. And then we're going to look at the entire object, not just the payload. And what we want to see is that the payload is going to say, um, the payload is going to have the information from the device, and we're going to have a new variable called light that's going to have the information from the current state of the light. And then let's try it. I'm going to turn. So we see the light object, we see the payload. When we look at the payload, it's what we expect. It's the information coming from the car cube. So we know that this is rotated right, and we rotated it about 51 degrees. And then we have the information from the light. We can see that the state is on. And then if we look into it some more, we can see the brightness is there. Um, it's 100%. It is 100% from what I can see. So yeah, everything is working. All right, so now we basically wanna make sure that when we rotate it right, that the information from the degrees is gonna make it increase in brightness. And when we rotate it left, the information from the degrees is going to basically take away brightness. So if we look at this number, right, I rotated it right, right? And it's positive 51 degrees. But what happens if we rotate it left? We see that it's a negative number, which is good. It makes our math very easy. And it also makes uh, setting up these nodes a little simpler. So instead of me needing a switch statement to do one set of logic for when it's positive and one when it's negative, since the numbers themselves contain uh, that polarity, we can just simply just run the math to increase and decrease the brightness based off of the input that the cube gives us. So the next node we're gonna need is the call service node. We're basically gonna just call the service and say, hey, we're gonna want you to decrease brightness, increase brightness. Pump that in. Okay, so for domain, we're gonna choose light. For services, we're gonna use turn on. That should work. We can see that we have all the information that we need here, which is cool, especially for this office light left. And then for here, we're gonna to go to data. So we're gonna say brightness. Yeah. So brightness. And then let's take a look at this. We're gonna look at this light object. We're gonna look for the brightness. And it's here, so we can just copy that path. Paste. And I believe we're gonna need the message in front. plus, and then we're gonna look for the degrees that we have here. So payload, actually, I think this is already open. So we want these relative degrees, we're gonna copy that path. And we're gonna say MSG, relative degrees. So it may be positive, it may be negative, and essentially, depending on how you turn, it's gonna make the brightness go up and it's gonna go down. Let's test this and see what happens. It gets brighter. And now, let's dim it. It's off. That simple. Just that simple.
So we can get a little fancier and do things like create tolerances. Something that happened to me is when I created this particular automation, I would have the cube on my bedside table and sometimes I would reach over to like to get my glasses or put things down or whatever it may be. And I may bump the cube and that slight touch would rotate it just a little bit, just enough for the lights to turn on. And that got really annoying. So I added some tolerances so that way I can rotate it for quite a bit before it actually registers an actual input and turn the lights up. Um, to do that, super simple. So for this, we're gonna use a switch node. it here right by the lights. So let's move all of this stuff over. Let's delete this and this. Add the switch node. In the switch node, we're simply going to look at the values and then we're gonna, so I believe it's message, payload dot event dot data dot args dot relative underscore degree let's do 45 degrees so if it's less than or equal to 45 degrees so when we're looking at the spectrum and you have uh zero and then you have on my right positive 45 and then my left negative 45 we want that when the cube rotates more than negative or less than negative 45 it's going to turn off and register like hey we're turning it off so we need it to be less than negative 45 and then on the other side we want it to be greater than 45. so we'll add another one and then we're going to say greater than or equal to 45. we're going to connect it and then now we're going to bring them over And also, we need to change this to number because they're coming in as numbers. Done. Perfect. So let's try it again. So it's on. If I turn it just a little bit, nothing really happens. Nothing really happens. But when we turn it a lot, there we go. And then if we turn it just a little bit or bump it, nothing. But when we turn it more, it gets dimmer. That's it. Okay, bye. Wait, sorry. Uh, if you look in the description, I will have links to this code. I'll export it so that way, if you're using Node Red, you should be able to import it. But or you can just pause it and just follow along, and you should be able to do it yourself as well. I would suspect that the hardest part would be getting the Akara Cube, getting it set up. I believe in you. Okay, bye.